1. Jumping to the bag. I never think about jumping to the guard to slow the game, only to finish the match faster. This is a great technique to surprise your opponent and take his back from standing. Using the standard judo grip, I control Rafael's collar and sleeve. I cannot jump straight into my opponent, so I take a big step with my left leg towards my partner's right foot. This gives me the angle to jump with my right foot and land on his hip. To break his grip off my lapel, I fall backwards to straighten the arm, then I snap his grip upward to remove it. Immediately, I drag his arm to the right as I pull myself onto his back. To stabilize the position, I must unlock my hooks and slide my right knee into his hip. This will allow my hips to slide to his back as I pull myself to the position using my shoulder grip. Two, guard jump armbar. This time, instead of breaking my partner's grip, I will transition into a great armbar attack. Again, I start off with the basic judo grip and I jump guard into Rafael's right hip. Maintaining control over his right arm, I lean all the way back, weave my right hand behind his right leg and grab onto his left pant leg at the knee. Next, I bring my right arm into Rafael's armpit and I pass my left leg over his head. I sink my rear to the mat while pulling with my arms and pushing with my legs. This forces Hoffa's body to be swept to the right. As he falls, I immediately squeeze my knees together and arch my hips upward to finish the arm lock. Three, guard jump hip push sweep. From the collar and elbow grip, I jump to the guard, but this time I jump squarely into him. I fall backward, break Hoffa's grip, switch his right sleeve to my right hand, and then I feed it to my left hand after it circles behind his right leg. Next, I release my hooks, allowing my rear to sink to the mat. As I do this, I make an inside hook with my right leg, and then I swim my right hand behind Rafael's left leg. From here, I pull back on his legs with my hands while pushing with my left leg and lifting with my right knee. This lifts him off the mat and sweeps him backwards. I make sure to follow him up and establish control of the half guard position. Four, omoplata sweep and arm lock combination. This time, I use the first sweep to get the reaction that I want, and then I go for a different sweep and arm bar. Start by controlling his collar and pull the guard. As you pull, break his grip, swim your arm under his leg, and control his sleeve. Then I slide my leg down and push his leg away to open his base. When he defends, I lock his shoulder with the omoplata and force him forward with my legs. After I sweep him, I swing my leg over his head and put him in a tight arm lock. Overhook straight arm lock. This is a great control and subsequent submission that is very effective when dealing with a postured opponent. Beginning from the close guard, my partner Rafael is in good posture with his right arm forward on my chest. To get rid of his grip, 
I cross grip his sleeve and feed my left hand underneath his arm until I can figure four grip my right wrist. Using my legs and arms in unison, I break Rafael's grip upward while pulling his body toward me to break his posture. As I do this, I continue to feed my left arm inside and around Rafael's right arm until I grab his collar with my left hand. Now I have the overhook control. I continue by putting my foot on the floor and slightly escaping my hips. Quickly, I put my right foot on top of his hip while I move my left foot to his upper back. To submit Rafael, I pinch my knees together, tighten straight arm lock, and hyperextend his elbow. Six, overhook omoplata. Whenever your opponent defends the straight arm lock by defending his arm, he is giving you the omoplata lock as a present. This is an important submission that should be attacked immediately. When Rafael controls my lapels, I control his sleeve so that I can break his grip. After I get the previous lock, I project his grip toward my head and I swim my arm around his until I control his lapel. At the same time, I put my hand in his elbow so that he cannot control my leg. Next, I move my hips and put my foot on top of his hip. Again, my other foot is on top of his back. I squeeze my knees for the straight arm lock, but Rafael defends by bending his arm. I transition my left leg over his shoulder and straighten both legs to keep Rafael's posture broken. Then I grab his far lapel so that I have greater body control when leaning forward to finish the shoulder lock. Seven, overhook triangle. This is my third major technique from the overhook closed guard series. Use this any time you manage to create enough space to pull your outside leg free if your opponent continues to pressure forward or if your other submissions are being defeated. Just like the previous techniques, I break his collar grip and swim my arm for the overhook control. This time, as I control his biceps, I put my foot on top of his hips and bring my left leg on top of his shoulder as if I am attacking the straight arm lock. Next, using my grip on his arm, I open up enough space to free my right leg and move to the omoplata position. From here, I keep control of my shin and transition from the shoulder lock to the triangle. I squeeze my knees together and get the submission. Eight, inside overhook to the back. As with any technique, your partners will eventually get used to them and they will get more difficult to execute. That is why I use this technique to disrupt their defenses as I attack a different angle. It is always important to have multiple angles of attack. This time, I switch my grips, grabbing Rafael's sleeve with my left hand and feeding my right hand to the figure four grip to set up the grip break and overhook. Using the same motion, I break my partner's grip upward while slightly pulling him toward me. Instead of swimming my same side arm as in the previous series, I will swim my cross side arm along with my head underneath his right arm. I continue to feed my arm until I can grab his left lapel. By keeping my upper back and shoulder pressing into his right shoulder, I effectively eliminate his ability to regain his posture. I hip escape slightly away from Rafael while maintaining my grip controls to open up his back and my hips. Finally, I lock his far arm and take the back position.
9. Inside Overhook Armbar Besides taking the back, the inside overhook is also great for isolating the arm and taking the armbar. Again, Rafael postures within my closed guard and I counter this by breaking his grip and swimming my arm and body for the inside overhook. Instead of controlling his shoulder with my right hand and hip escaping to the back, I cup his right triceps with my right hand as I clench my elbow to my ribs. Immediately, I walk my feet on the mat to get my hips closer to Rafael's right arm. Then, I put my left foot on his hip to propel my body upward while cross-gripping his left lapel. To finish the tight arm bar, I climb my right leg, using it to push Rafael to his right, while I swing my left leg over his face. I close my elbows to my body and lift my hips to hyperextend Rafael's arm for the arm bar. Ten, taking the back off armbar defense. Sometimes, as you go for the previous armbar, your opponent will ball up to prevent the armbar. This is the opportunity to change your attack and effortlessly transition to the back instead. Beginning in the close guard, I break Rafael's posture with the inside overhook to set up the armbar attack. To defend, my partner puts his elbow on the mat as he closes the distance between his head and my body, making it difficult for me to find the space for the armbar. With Rafael in his defensive posture, his back has opened up. I hip escape away as I grab underneath his left armpit. Then, I pull him into the space I created with my hip escape while pulling his hips to my body with my right foot. Rafael lands in my lap and I am in a great position to attack the submission. Eleven, Flower Sweep The Flower Sweep is a beautiful piece of leverage and coordination that every student needs to master. As Rafael postures within my closed guard, I set up the reversal by grabbing his right sleeve with the same side grip, while my right hand grips his left pant leg below the knee. Using my hips, I bridge into Rafael to force his counter reaction. Immediately, I pull my legs to my head to drive his posture down. This also lightens his leg, making it possible for me to pull his left leg up and outward. With his base compromised, I tuck his right arm to our bodies while blocking his right leg with my left. Then, I continue the momentum, steering him to his right with my right leg driving into his armpit. Rafael cannot base out with his arms or legs and is swept to the mounted position. Twelve, armbar off sweep defense. If you are ready for all of your opponent's defensive options, you are ready to win the fight. This holds true with this dynamic armbar when your opponent defends the flower sweep. Once again, I attempt the flower sweep from my closed guard. As I try to roll Rafael over, he defends by posting his left arm to stop the reversal. I must react immediately. I release his left foot and grab his left arm with my right as I drive my shin across his face and neck. I continue this motion, rolling to face his legs as I hyperextend his elbow. This forces Rafael to roll to his back to defend, where he lands in the full armbar position. I extend his arm and get the submission.
13. Nearside armbar variation. This time, your opponent defends the previous armbar from the flower sweep by posting his arm further, making it difficult to control. This is the perfect chance to attack the near side armbar. Just as in the previous position, I attempt to flower sweep Rafael from my closed guard. Fearing the rolling armbar, he defends by posting his left arm further from my body. The next move is simple and effective. Using my sleeve grip and Rafael's imbalance, I pull his sleeve as I throw my left leg over his head. Rafael falls to his back and I insert my hips deeper for the armbar attack. I grab his wrist with both hands and bridge my hips upward to hyperextend the elbow for the armbar finish. Fourteen, sweep to omoplata. As you improve with your flower sweep combinations, your opponent will seek more creative ways to defend the sweep without exposing his arms for the armbar. This is evident in this omoplata off a of forehead posting defense. For the close guard, I quickly attack the flower sweep. This time, Rafael defends by posting his forehead on the mat to stop his momentum while he pushes into my hips with his left arm to prevent the armbar. Though he feels momentarily safe, he has overexposed his left elbow. Releasing my left hand from his sleeve, I pull his elbow to further open it as I slide my hips to his left side and lock the omoplata position. I finish this submission by sitting up and controlling his hip, preventing his rolling escape while torquing his left shoulder for the tap. Fifteen, Bravo Armbar. The Bravo grip is a fantastic control because it allows you to control more of his body with one hand, leaving your other arm open to set up attacks. This armbar is one of my favorites from the Bravo position because most people expect the choke before this rapid submission. I begin on the closed guard with Rafael in posture. Pulling my legs to my head, I break Rafael's posture downward, forcing him to stop his momentum by posting his hands on the mat. As he recovers, I quickly feed his left lapel toward his head and my waiting left hand. Immediately, I slide my right hand under his left knee as I scoop my hips to the right, trapping Rafael's right arm. To finish, I throw my left leg over his face, close my left elbow over his arm to secure it, and bridge to create the arm bar pressure. Sixteen, Bravo straight arm lock off arm bar defense. This is a great arm lock to use when your opponent escapes the previous arm bar. Beginning in the close guard, I break Rafael's posture and get the Bravo grip. Immediately, I go for the previous arm bar, but Rafael defends by pulling his right arm out as I swing my leg over his head. Although he has escaped his right arm, his left arm is open to attack. By locking my feet, I prevent him from escaping his arm. I clasp my right elbow over his left elbow, forcing it downward into the gap between my hips and his elbow. This forces his elbow to hyperextend, and he must tap to signal the submission.
17. Bravo Triangle When you get the Bravo position, you have an advantage. So attack, attack, attack. This is a very direct triangle choke and explicitly follows this principle. As I get to the Bravo position from the close guard, I first block his left elbow with my right hand. Immediately, I walk my feet onto his hips, sliding my right knee in front of Rafael's left elbow while my left knee pinches his shoulder. Without delay, I grab his left wrist and open it outward, giving me the room to pull my right leg to the inside. I throw my right leg across Rafael's neck, secure it with my grip on my shin, and lock the triangle as the pit of my left knee closes over my right ankle. To finish, I pull down on my right shin while squeezing my knees together. With incredible pressure on his carotid arteries, Rafael is forced to tap. One, Tate Day sweep with belt grip. This is the sweep that Fernando Tate Day used to do all the time when we trained together at TT. He loves this type of butterfly sweep with the belt grip, and he did it on me so much that I love it now too. When I transition to the butterfly, Rafael presses into me to flatten me out, and I can't do anything. So, it is very important for me to pull him on top of me and at the same time lift him a little bit by restraining my leg to create some room. Once I have this extra space, I grab his belt with my right hand and I use my right foot as a butterfly hook. To initiate the sweep, I tuck his right elbow into his body with my left hand, pull his body toward where his arm would have based, and shoot my left foot to the outside with my toes on the floor. To finish the sweep, I jump my hips toward his body and then I lift my hook to sweep him while my left foot pushes off the mat for greater extension. Two, day sweep to straight arm lock. The straight arm lock is a great go-to move whenever your opponent manages to free his arm from the day sweep. If you have submissions linked to your sweeps, your game becomes very threatening and your opponent will never feel comfortable. When I go for the day sweep, Rafael manages to escape his hand to the floor for base. Though he has defended the sweep, he has set up my next attack. With his arms exposed and my hips lower, I decide to switch the attack. As I go for the submission, I force him to straighten his body by pushing his hips down in a way with my left foot. Then, I place my right foot on his back as I isolate his arm. I control his arm and put downward pressure on his left elbow with my knee. With this pressure, he cannot recompose his posture and I continue to squeeze until he taps. Three, X-Guard Single Leg. Whenever my opponent defends the Tate Day Sweep, the X-Guard and its many sweeps usually become available. I begin in the Flattened Butterfly Guard and I try the Tate Day Sweep, but this time I can't get it to work because he uses his hands and legs to base out. As he defends the sweep, I push his shoulder away, swim my left arm under his leg, and acquire the X-Guard as his base opens up. My left foot is hooked in front of his hip, while my right hook is behind the knee and lower leg. Then, I push his leg away from me by pushing with my hooks, use my right arm and left foot to stand up, and then I walk toward Rafael's back, 
to finish the single leg takedown. Four, X guard Tomo Nage. This is a beautiful sweep that I originally learned from Marcelo Garcia. I use this sweep when I cannot stand because my opponent has too much pressure on me. As in the previous position, I transition from the attempted tay to day sweep to the X guard. I attempt the single leg, but I cannot stand up against Rafael's pressure. Because I can't straighten my leg, I fake it a little, and then I use his reaction to feed his right arm to my left hand. Then, I pull him off of me so that I can easily grab the left arm. With both of his hands dominated, I lift him toward me with my hooks. Then I pull him forward while pushing his left arm downward to flip him with the Tomonage sweep. This is a spectacular sweep to see in action. Five, X guard to the back. If I cannot go for the single leg and I cannot grab my opponent's sleeves, then I go for this option, taking the back. From the X guard with his right arm controlled, I pull his leg to the opposite side of my head with my right hand while I grab his belt with my left hand for control. Then I push his leg away from me as I move my right hook behind his right knee. Next, I pull his belt and push into his knees to take his base away. Rafael falls backward and I take the back position. Six, X guard tripod sweep. Oftentimes, the simplest technique is your best option. This sweep perfectly epitomizes the leverage and mechanics of the X guard. Again, I attempt the tay to day sweep and my partner defends. I move to the X guard when he stands up, but I cannot do anything against his strong base. So, I keep my left leg on top of his hips while my right leg moves lower behind the ankle. I sweep by pushing against his ankle and his hip. My left hook on the hip pushes to sweep him backward while my right leg pushes to sweep away his base. As Rafael trips backwards, I pull myself into a great position to begin my guard pass. Seven, underhook sweep to the back. The underhook control from the butterfly guard is a great position to sweep, but most experienced opponents will expect this. This is why I like to use this sweep to the back combination to catch my foe off guard. 
To begin, I push Raphael off of me, and when I see a good opportunity, I swim my right arm under his to grab his belt. Then, as I tuck his left elbow and go for the regular sweep, Rafael manages to stay grounded because he uses his left hand to stop the sweep. When he defends, he blocks the sweep but opens his back. I lower my hook to bring him closer, trap his left leg with my left hook, insert my right hook, and get the over and under grip to control the back position. Eight, lapel grip variation. It is important that you have an option for whenever grips loosen or change. Sometimes, when you try the previous position, his belt is too loose, and you have to switch to this option to control the lapel instead. I begin with Rafael pressuring into me to flatten the butterfly guard. As I push him up and away, I swim under his right armpit with my left arm while passing his left lapel to my left hand. Once I grab the lapel, I squeeze my elbow to his back. Controlling his side tight to his ribs, then I grab his left wrist and I go for the sweep. When he defends by basing with his right arm, I lower my hook to close the distance, hip escape away from his arm, and I pull him on top of my chest. As he falls into my lap, I take his back. Lapel grip to helicopter sweep. This is a very beautiful sweep that can be effective for many people. Though it may seem like this should cause problems for less flexible people, I really do not see a problem. Most are used to getting stacked and are fairly flexible here. Try to do the spin and practice this move a little, and I'm sure you can be successful with it. As with the previous techniques in the series, I begin in the flattened guard, and I lift my partner and feed the lapel to my left underhook. This next part is critical. I grab his wrist and fall to the side for the sweep, and Rafael defends by posting his right arm. He has managed to pressure my left hook because his hips are lower, so I decide to follow his momentum and spin my body upside down for the helicopter. As I spin to the inverted position, I grab his right knee with my right hand. Then I pull him forward while lifting him with my arm and leg to sweep him. I love this sweep; it is so beautiful. Ten, double underhooks straight arm lock. The double underhooks control from the butterfly guard is a deceptively strong position to attack submissions and expose the back. Because your opponent believes he can always base out against the sweep attempt, this position becomes very strong for attacking these overexposed arms. In this position, I have the opportunity to lock both of my arms underneath my opponents as I lift him off of me. From here, I fall to the mat, bringing my partner with me. He cannot stop this pull due to the powerful lock I have on his body. As he falls toward the mat, he has no choice but to extend his arms to impede the possible reversal. Immediately, I grasp one of his overexposed arms and escape my hips while pressuring his hips. As with all straight arm locks, I pressure his body downward so that he cannot regain his posture. From here, he does not have the leverage to escape, and he must submit as I put downward pressure on his elbow. Eleven, straight arm lock to Americana variation. 
Everyone needs some rapid-fire submission chains in their arsenal, and this is one of my favorites. When I attack the straight arm lock, I am always aware of its close relation to the Americana lock. Drill these together and develop an overwhelming attack. As I move through the previous technique, I arrive at the straight arm lock and pressure his elbow for the submission. Rafael escapes by pulling his elbow. When he does this, he gives me the opportunity to transition to the Americana lock. As he pulls his elbow out of the first attack, he moves his elbow too far inward. Once his elbow gets exposed, I wrap my forearms over his arm in a figure four lock and submit him with the Americana. Double underhooks to back. This is a great technique for flattening your opponent and taking his back. As you will see, the leverage in this position is very strong and uncomfortable for your opponent. Once again, I had the opportunity to lock my arms in the double underhooks position from the butterfly guard. To flatten Rafael, I rock backward and then kick my hooks forward to send his hips downward. This is a very uncomfortable position for Rafael. After I do this, I escape my hips while shucking my shoulder to send his arm forward. I continue to escape until I can duck my head under his arm and open up his back for the taking. I climb onto the back to consolidate the position. Thirteen, Double underhooks to back variation. This is a variation of the previous technique for taking the back. Sometimes, your opponent powers forward to prevent himself from being flattened. For me, this is just another opportunity to take the back. Once again, I began in the flattened butterfly guard and I transitioned to the double underhooks butterfly guard. This time, as I pull him forward to kick out his base, he defends by putting his hands on the floor. When he does this, he gives me the space I need and I quickly swim my right arm under his armpit, escaping my head. Once my head is free, I push him down and away with my hook and I control his left lapel. Finally, I hip escape slightly while pulling the lapel to bring Rafael's back to my chest. Fourteen, Omoplata against hip pressure. Many opponents like to make their hips very heavy to cut through the butterfly guard and pass the guard. When they do this, I use this move to get the Omoplata. In this situation, as I push Rafael off of me to set up the sweep, he defends by driving his right hip into my hook. This next move is very important. I put my right foot on top of his hip and I push it away from me. This opens his arm for attack. Next, I place my left foot on his back and attack the straight armbar, but I can't finish because he escapes the elbow. As he does this, I immediately pull my left leg over his shoulder and transition to the omoplata to finish the counter. Fifteen, inverted defense against Jacare pass. The over-the-shoulder butterfly pass is one that I have seen Jacare Souza use many times with great results. This is a fast pass and the secret to defending against it is acting just as quickly to flow with the pass. 
From the flattened butterfly guard, I push Rafael away and swim my right underhook to prepare the sweep. Rafael counters by controlling over my shoulder and grabbing my left leg. As he begins the pass, it's very important that I follow his momentum by spinning into him on the same side. Though it may feel like I am giving him the guard pass, I am actually using his momentum to propel myself through to the guard recovery. I continue the spin until I finish on the other side from where I started and can easily recover the guard. I cannot say this enough. This drill must be practiced very often for success. You have to react immediately so that you automatically move into this defense without thought. Sixteen, triangle against underhook pass. Sometimes your opponent underhooks your leg to take the power out of your hooks, block your hip, and pass the guard. Don't let him get away with this, and instead use your hooks to set up this simple triangle choke. Once again, I push Rafael off of me to set up a possible tete de sweep. Rafael defends by swimming his right leg under my left leg and pressuring my other hook. From here. I cannot force the sweep because I have to defend the guard pass, so I grab his right wrist as I hook my left foot under his right leg. While I do this, I control his belt and I pull him downward by extending my hook to lower his hips. Once this posture has been broken, I bring my left leg over his shoulder and put him in the easy triangle choke. With his posture broken so low, I can easily fasten the choke, squeeze my knees, and get the submission. Remember. It is important that you first defend the guard. If you don't grab his wrist and push his leg, it becomes very easy for him to pass the guard. One, half guard defense straight arm bar omoplata. Whenever I am in half guard, I always worry about my neck. Besides being a great omoplata attack, this technique is crucial for learning to block the neck control and transition out of a controlled half guard. As Rafael tries to control the top half guard, it's crucial that I control his biceps to avoid neck control. When he holds my neck tightly, I can't do anything efficiently. So I control his biceps with my right hand. Block his left shoulder with my left arm to make space. Move my hips away from him, and then I wait for him to react. With his arm still under my left armpit, fighting for position, I can tell he wants to play a pressure game and get the cross face control. I put my right foot on his hip, and I control his overexposed arm so that he cannot recompose himself. As with all omoplata setups off of tight control, I push the hips a little bit lower and put my left foot on top of his back. I tightly squeeze my knees and submit him with the straight armbar omoplata combination. Two, overhook to triangle variation. As your partner or opponent gets used to you. He will inevitably defend by pressuring into your omoplata or straight arm lock attempt. That is when you go for this triangle choke. As I go for the previous technique, Rafael defends by pressing forward. I control his wrist and shoulder, then once again move my hips to the outside. While I have wrist control, I release my left arm from the shoulder and I wrap an overhook around his right arm, securing his left lapel with my left hand. Next, I escape my left leg. And I push down on his right hip to set up the triangle. Finally, I pull my right leg in front of Rafael's left arm, and I lock the triangle for the submission. As you try this, make sure your timing is spot on. If your timing is right, you will move quickly enough so that his forward pressure against your foot on the hip helps you finish the lock.
3. Hook sweep against same side base. It is very important that you not only know how to defend the half guard, but that you have attacks and reversals for some of the most popular guard passes. In this situation, as I prevent net control, Rafael switches to the same side pass with his head on the mat for base. I defend by controlling his biceps and belt while escaping my hips to make room for my left foot to hook. From here, I am in a great position to bring the other leg outside to push myself off the mat and then sweep him with the lifting butterfly hook. Four, Kimura Reversal Off Sweep Defense. This is a variation of the previous technique when my partner defends the sweep. In this situation, I want to sweep or take the back, but Rafael wizards my arm and drives too much pressure on me while hiding his left arm. I counter by securing his right sleeve with my right hand. Then, I hip escape to my side to make room for my left butterfly hook. Next, I lift my hook a little bit to elevate Rafael and create the space I need to roll out under his near side armpit. As I come out the side, I escape my head, put my back on top of his shoulder, and I crank the joint like a Kimura arm lock. The pressure is too much. Rafael either has to tap or more likely roll to escape the possible submission. I come up on top to finish the sweep. Five, lapel feed to helicopter sweep variation. This is a variation of the helicopter sweep off of the same side guard pass. To defend against Rafael's pressure, I slide my body to a side position so that I can breathe while recomposing a better attack position. Then I circle my trapped left arm under his right armpit as I open his opposite side lapel. Next, I feed my underhooked arm the lapel as Rafael wizards my left arm to prevent my back attack. Immediately, I slide my head to the inside and I roll on top of my shoulders. I throw my left leg as a pendulum to get deeper underneath Rafael as I grab his left leg with my right hand. Using my right leg, I lift my opponent while pushing him off the ground by pulling on his lapel while pushing on his leg. Six, reverse half guard hook sweep. In this series, my partner switches to the reverse half guard, a great position to pass the guard, attack the legs, or take the back. This technique is a great way to turn the tables with a simple and effective hook sweep. Worrying about a possible sweep, Rafael switches to the reverse half guard to pass my guard. To defend, I hip escape to make space and create the proper side angle. With my left arm still in place as an underhook, I grab Rafael's right knee with my free hand and I press it downward. At the same time, I insert my right butterfly hook and pull down on his lapel to keep him grounded. Finally, I lift his front right leg off the floor by lifting my hook and pushing off the mat with my left leg and I turn him for the sweep. Seven, reverse half guard to the back. In this variation of the previous sweep, my partner winds up and uses a stronger control to prevent the sweep. As I pull myself lower in the half guard to sweep, Rafael defends by transitioning to the reverse half guard. To control my body, he swims his right elbow under my right arm while pulling my left pant leg to keep cross body control. This prevents me from executing the previous sweep. So now I have to control his left lapel with my right hand. It is very important when I switch the grip that I sit up to my left elbow to force his reaction. 
I rock him a little bit forward, escape to my side, and he reacts by pushing back. As he forces himself backwards, I use his momentum by following him with my hips, and I effortlessly slide to his back. Eight, spinning Bravo escape. Whenever your opponent grabs your lapel with the Bravo grip, you have to treat the attack seriously. If you don't, you are likely to be submitted with one of the various chokes that the grip is known for. In this technique, Rafael passes my left lapel to his right hand to attack with the Bravo choke as he slides his knee free of the half guard. I react by pushing against his hip and shoulder with my left hand. I cannot let Rafael close his elbow to my body or else my defense will be much more difficult. Then I swim my right arm under his right armpit and I spin my legs toward him to follow his movement. I continue the spin until I have unraveled the Bravo grip and recomposed the ground. Nine, Bravo escape to guard recovery. This is a very simple early Bravo defense. In this situation, my partner stands to cut his knee through my half guard and set up the Bravo choke. To stop his progress, I don't let him switch the grip by grabbing his arm, and I hook my right foot inside his thigh to keep distance. Then I bring his right leg forward by swinging my left leg until it is close enough for me to underhook it with my left arm. Once I control the leg, I cannot release my grips on his sleeves until I have set up an attack of my own or he gives up on his attack. Ten, half guard to deep half guard drill. Getting to the half guard is a skill in itself that will take some time for you to get comfortable with. This is a very important drill that must be practiced often. The drill begins in the half guard with my opponent transitioning to the cross knee pass. As he does this, I force him to the opposite side by twisting his knee as I shift my hips from the right to the left. This leaves me in the deep half guard position, directly underneath Rafael's base. Then. I continue repeating the drill by rolling my hips back and forth until I have mastered the pendulum motion that I need to get the deep half guard. Eleven, knee push sweep. This is a great deep half guard that focuses on the weakest links of your opponent's base, his flimsy knees. Beginning in the half guard, I pendulum my body to the deep half guard as Hafael attempts to cut his right knee through. I underhook his left leg, bringing it high onto my shoulder, and on my right hand grabs the material. Whether I control his belt or lapel doesn't matter, just as long as I control something to keep him tight. Using my legs. I lift Rafael above me so that I can reach his right hand with my left arm as I insert my right knee under his upper thigh. 
From this position, I once again feint the forward sweep. When he reacts by basing back, I use his momentum to push into his knee and send him backwards for the sweep. This is what is great about this position. Once my leg is under his, it is easy to move him forward or backward until I hit either sweep. Twelve. Open half guard to single leg sweep. Whenever my opponent shows me that he is thinking about crossing his knee to pass, I always block him with my inside hook and attack sweeps like the single leg. I begin in the half guard with Rafael standing to cut his knee through my guard. As he moves into position, I hook my right foot behind his knee and I use it to pull his leg forward. At the same time, I control his right sleeve with my left hand as soon as I underhook his left leg. Then, I move my left foot to his knee, and I push his legs apart. As his balance shifts, I swing my right leg to the mat, and I stand up with the single leg. I pull his arm while lifting his leg to send Rafael over my shoulder for the sweep. 13. Double lapel hook sweep. Whenever I have control of both lapels from the deep half guard, he's stuck on top of my body. This is an excellent setup for sweeps and other controls. Once again, I transition to the deep half guard as Rafael attempts to cut his knee through for the guard pass. From here, I swim my left hand under his leg and pass it to his right lapel. Then, I secure his left lapel with my right hand to consolidate the double lapel control. This position provides a lot of control because my opponent cannot easily move from side to side. Next, I push Rafael slightly forward to open up some space. As I do this, I put my right hook in while my other foot locks his leg in place. In one motion, I drive my left foot to the mat, bridge to my right, and lift my hook skyward. Fourteen, double lapel back transition. This move is a terrific option when my opponent defends the previous technique by straightening his body in front of my head. Though his base may prevent him from being pulled backward, his reaction is just what I need to take the back. I begin the half guard and I transition to double lapel control deep half guard as Rafael attempts to cut his knee through. I try the previous sweep but my partner defends by keeping his weight forward. As he pushes toward my head, I shuck his leg over my head to expose his back. My right hook assists this motion by pushing him further. From here, I open my hooks and I pull his lapels to my chest and take the back position. Fifteen, double lapel spin sweep. Sometimes my opponents are really savvy and are able to defend both of my double lapel sweeps. 
This is the perfect opportunity to attack with this unorthodox spinning sweep. Once again, I transition to the double lapel control from the deep half guard as my opponent attempts to pass. I attempt the double lapel hook sweep, then I push Hafael forward to get his back. Hafael defends by lowering his leg to prevent the back attack. However, he has opened up plenty of space for me to escape my head and spin out the back door. With my head free, I quickly spin out behind him, transitioning to my knees. As I do this, I cross his lapels and pull them downward to force his body to the mat. John Robles, John Robles, please see what it number four. John Robles. Bianca Barreto, Bianca Barreto, 
show! Vai lá, André Carter, quebrou a jarra pra tu, fica por cima! Move aí pro mim, show! Move aí pro mim, show! Vamos, vamos! Vamos, 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 show! Vem, cara, tô já cansado já! Vem, 